I'm taking beans out of your bean bag. I did not. Because <laughs> it was in my office. Like not a, my office, it was in my cube. It's though. like a bean cushion. <laughs> this is a bean cushion. Welcome back to Bean Bags and Startups with Jordan and Bob. I'm Jordan. I'm Bob. And we're just here to tell you about some more things that are going on in the startup world and we're going to have super lots of fun. The, the first one I'll talk about is a, a company I found out about called Grovio. Okay. Uh, and what they've built is a smart assistant for plants. Mm -hmm. So for your house plants. So it measures the, I guess, soil temperature and humidity level and moisture level and all this stuff. And then it waters your plants and it can handle up to three plants at a time. But it's like a, a little like desktop thing. So it's got just like a little host. So we're not talking about like huge plants positioned through the house. Like these are like on the shelf little plants and you would put this device there and it would, it would water, water your plants. But I could see me using something like this if I had some, you know, money that I didn't have anything else to spend it on. But why? Because <laughs> why not? Why? Cause because I, cause I forget and like I, you know, like you go out of town, who's going to water my plants? But you know? the thing, it looks like an Alexa. So I'm, I'm assuming it's fairly expensive. I would say north of $80. I'm guessing. Grovio, if I'm wrong, Hold me to it, send me one, and it'd be look awesome. It up. You're but right it's, there. Just look it's up how much really is. Grovio retailing for $149. Oh my god, never mind. I would not buy that. $149. That's a lot of money for three plants. Because you could just I'm, get a new plant. Right. I'm I'm thinking, <laughs> like one, if if you're so forgetful to water your plants that you need a hundred and fifty dollar personal assistant to remind you. Maybe you should just stop buying plants. By the way, to get the retail price, I pulled up their, uh, it actually linked to their crowdfunding campaign mm. um, where they were well short of their goal. Oh, that's well disappointing. Short. So it turns out well, that- Well, they have things that do this for you without like having, without being like high tech. Not everything needs like a MEMS enabled Bluetooth IoT capable solution um, when you could do it really easy and really cheap. Sorry. Got a watering can. Sorry, Grovio. Good luck, though. The next one we're going to talk about is called Smalt. S M A L T. Smalt is a salt shaker that is also, wait for it, a Bluetooth speaker. Because that's what the world always needed. I mean, I know that every single time I go and have food and I'm like, hmm, this needs some salt, I think, man, I wish that this would also play, play music. music. Okay, that's fair. It's like an immediate thought that I have every single time. I mean, maybe it was like, they, like, cause you keep, I don't know where you keep salt. We keep salt at like the salt shakers at the middle of our table. We keep it in a salt shaker. Now <laughs> like in salt. the middle of your table, right? At like home, like it stays in the middle so that everybody could reach it. Maybe some, right. somebody was like throwing a party and they're like, man, the speaker should be where the salt shaker is. There are already Bluetooth speakers. Yeah. There are already salt shakers. And sometimes when you combine something, I'm like, whoa, convenience. But in this case, like, I don't see it as the need to take two things. So like if they wanted to make like a all in one salt and pepper shaker so that they're like side by side, but connected, it only takes up one spot or you only have to wash one thing. I get that. Those are out there. And then you can't make Ooh, that's it. That's a good point. How would you wash device. it? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like you, you were saying with salt, like it's on the table. Why is it on the table? Because people grab it and pour salt on their food. And so like as it's like playing shaking. music, like yeah, and you know, you take a speaker and you kind of point it and it like messes with the sounds. So I'm just gonna be like, sorry, just grab it. Just like really just loud in somebody's face. Yeah. Just, like, while you... And then yeah. they, they try to like ease the burden of the nonsense factor by saying it also does like mood lighting and ambiance which just makes me even more so because I'm like, when I'm eating, well, I want the lights off. And they'd be like, why do you have a weird mood light in the middle of your table? Nice. And then you'd be like, no, that's my salt shaker. And then somebody would be like, oh, will you pass the salt? And then you'd, you'd be like, like no, it'd be in somebody's expensive. face. Like you should be playing like smooth jazz in somebody else's face while you- Right, right. While I, you shake the salt. Wow, for once, I think for once we are in total we agree. agreement. We agree. um, and. Fortunately or unfortunately, uh, this this product just launched, so there's no pricing info out there. 
Uh, they're not in market yet, but this is a concept. But like from a tech perspective, I've never looked at a salt shaker and thought, now <laughs> there's something screaming for an IoT upgrade. Like if my salt shaker could connect wirelessly and notify me that someone is using salt in my house or like a salt shaker security cam, like no, we don't need it. So this is a company called, I think it's called Kaza or Kaza. I don't know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> it's C-A-Z-Z-A. -Z -Z -A. Um, and it was founded by two people in Silicon Valley and it is 3D printing buildings. Okay. It's a giant 3D pr printer. I can show you. It's like a giant 3D printing robot. Looks like that. So that thing's freaking huge. It's like the size of a crane. It was invented by two people who are 20 and 26, which I thought was pretty amazing because that seems really young. That's like if I invented like a 3D but like house how? printing crane. Yeah, I would love to ask these guys because looking at that picture, how do you build the first one? In, in the sense of yeah, what must that huge. thing have cost to build? It's huge. Oh, it cost millions of dollars. And then who built it? Uh, the it... 20 year old, um, because he had an app that he sold. And he was like, man, this whole 3D printing buildings thing seems pretty interesting. This, this is so easy. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. And something else. they're predicting, uh, he actually, Chris Kelsey, the 20 year old who um, is the CEO and co-founder of Kaza, uh, said that he thinks yeah, he, his goal is that 25% of buildings will be 3D printed by 2030. Oh, they're supposed to build the world's first 3D printed skyscraper. Nobody's built a skyscraper 3D printed yet. Well, wow. right now there's a company in China wow. that can make 10 houses in one day using their giant 3D printer thing. Like real houses? Like real like houses. Movie studio, like... No, like real, like real 3D like printed over. houses. Okay. Yep. Um, also, okay. their company, Kaza or Kaza, Kaza. Kaza. <laughs> um, so they have a $25 million valuation and they expect $35 million in revenue by the end of this year after they open their Series A. Think about if you're just building this building like from scratch. It would take months, you would have to pay a lot of people, you have to pay for all of your supplies and stuff and all of these things. Meanwhile, this thing can do it in a day. With little to no manpower like you need like three people to operate the machine so maybe a couple more to make sure everything's safe but they're not like you know it'd be done in a day so if you like this video be sure to give it a big thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channel check us out on twitter facebook instagram and our website also if you are interested in any of the stories we talked about you can find them down in the description and i think that's it so bye